What is going on guys? Pat on the shop and tonight we're uh, talking about piston ring orientation. This video is for one of my subscribers, Matt, who sent me an email about a few questions he had putting together his first small block. Let's take a look. So in the last video we talked about uh, filing uh, piston rings, getting your end gaps and everything sorted out. Uh, so we got that all together. I got the bottom end over here uh, for the, the black block that I'm building and this is actually the pistons and uh, rods for the YouTube, the orange block, the roller block. So um, after that video posted, I got a few emails from guys that are building their, uh, you know, their first small block Chevys in their garage. And some things maybe they're not 100% clear on in that they're just reaching out and asking some questions and I love it. So uh, the one, actually a couple guys asked about how to orientate or clock the rings because there are a few different ways of doing it and a few different things online. But I'm just going to show you how I do it and uh, hopefully uh, it works out for you guys. Alright, let's go ahead and start putting our piston rings on. So we're going to start at the bottom. Uh, no oil support rails on this. So a real easy install. We're going to start with our Expander, by far the easiest one to put on. Uh, just you know, slide it over, get it to the bottom. That one's super slick, goes on no problem. Don't worry about clocking any of these until we have everything together. Then you're going to grab two of the thin oil rings here, and uh, these are, again are going to go on just by hand, uh, no tools. But these kind of go on in a bit of a spiral motion. So you want to. Don't you don't want to bend it as much to the point where it uh, you actually wreck the ring. So you just want to slide it in to the bottom here. See how I got it in under the expander rail. We're going to put the bottom one in first, and then you're just going to work your way around, and you're going to try not to scratch the piston when you go down with the edge here, and then you're going to just get it in just like that. So see, see now we have the bottom one in, and then we're going to do the same one with the top. Again, get it in the. Get it in the top here, just on the oil rail. Lift the edge so you don't scratch the piston. And there we are. If you can, if you actually look at the oil rail, the expander, whatever you want to call it, there's actually a groove where the rings sit on. So when they're in, there's a little lip, so that's what actually holds this in place into the piston. That sits in there on the top and on the bottom. There's that little raised lip. So that's actually what it looks like when it's on the piston. So that's simple, all on, all done by hand. So now for the next rings, uh, you you can do this uh, with you know by hand, but I always recommend getting yourself a piston ring installer. Some guys don't use them, it's just like anything. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, I've broken piston rings before. I've been you know back when I was young doing dirt bikes and stuff, trying to put them on by hand. I have broken piston rings, so especially the cast, like the second rings, they'll break fairly easy if you're if you flex them a little bit too much and they're not made to be spiraled on they're meant to be open straight on not kind of bending it in this fashion so um, when you're putting your next rings on so the the oil rings they can go there's usually no orientation that I've ever seen so they can go either way but when you start getting into your second and your top ring you got to start looking out for some um, identification to, to index which way the ring goes on the piston this way or this way so if you look on this second ring here there's actually a dot so the dot on the piston ring indicates that that dot points upwards so the ring goes on the piston dot up like that verify that with your piston manufacturer there should be a sheet of paper that comes with your piston rings uh, and verify that is what is going on but nine times out of ten or I would say ten times out of ten if there's a dot that goes to upwards so this is where a piston ring tool comes in handy uh, this is the way I do it so see, see the flat spot see how there's this part that's lifted and then there's the flat spot the flat spot I always go to the top there's our dot pointing upwards just like that and then you're just going to squeeze it enough just to get it over the piston. Don't over squeeze it, just enough. And there we are. So that is on like that. And you're going to notice that I haven't put any 
um, oil on the rings yet. Some guys will pre-oil their rings uh, and before they install them. That's not something I do. Uh, again, you can if you want. Some guys will oil up their rings. I do it after. So uh, I make sure everything's on and proper before I put any oil on there. Matter, it just, goes on. So the same thing, just like this. Flat spot towards the top. And we're on. And like I said, just expand them enough to get them on. You don't have to open the pliers up all the way like that. Just, just enough to get them on. All right, before we index our pistons, we're gonna make sure that we have our pistons going the right way. So I wanna show you guys something. Uh, this is also really important if you're, it's your first time putting a small block Chevy together or a similar GM engine. Um, but I want you to notice something right here. So see on this connecting rod, see how there's a chamfer chamfered edge right here more so bring that over a little bit this chamfered edge right here see other you can see there's a flat spot here there's the where the bearing rides and then there's a chamfered edge there and then if you look on this rod it's not so much of a chamfer there's barely anything it's just flat spot maybe the slightest little chamfer and then where the bearing rides but if you flip it over there's our flat spot our chamfered edge and then our bearing cell. So this is really important to look out for because this this is what index indexes your uh, pistons in the bore. So oftentimes, if you're doing rebuild rebuilder like these are uh, reconditioned rods, they'll be lab labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wherever they came from. But you don't want to rely on that. You want to make sure that these were put on the proper way, and uh, you're putting them in the block the proper way. So a number one cylinder here. Um, the chamfered edge on your connecting rod is going to point towards the front, okay? So chamfered edge towards the front of the block on bank one. So all these cylinders, one, three, five, and seven. So there's the chamfered edge towards the front. Dot towards the front often on these pistons. We're supposed to be on this piston. So. If you look at number two cylinder, so this will be here, number two. So bank two, if you want to call it that. So that's two, four, six, and eight cylinders. This chamfer will go towards the back. On this, the way these pistons were put together, the actual writing will be the right, uh, will be at the bottom. The dot will be towards the front but the chamfer will be towards the back. That's very important. So that will actually go up against the, the rod, or uh, the crank journal, sorry. So make sure that goes towards the back. Super important. If you don't put them in the right way, first of all, you're gonna have a hard time getting them actually in. You'll lose most of your um, like rod side clearance if you can actually get them in or all of it. You'll have a tight spot the engine will fail. So make sure your chamfer, num bank two, towards the back. Chamfer for bank one, pistons, one, three, five, and seven, towards the front. Super important, write that down, don't forget it. So like I said earlier, I don't, um, I don't oil my piston rings beforehand. These just go on just like this. And then what I do is I oil them once they're on the piston. So I'll usually go to the gap. This is just some uh, break-in oil in a can. Obviously you do this before you index your rings, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Make sure your rings move freely. If you filed your rings and you feel that there's some sort of burr when you're turning it, you gotta stop, pull that ring out and find that burr. But the rings should move free uh, in and out. You should be able to squeeze them, no issues, and have everything lubed up. So that's the way I do it. Like I said, some guys pre-lube their rings. It's just not something I've done. I have never do it like that. This is the way I do it. So let's index these rings uh, and uh, see what it looks like. Now that we determined the top of our piston, we're going the right way. Uh, this is number one uh, cylinder, so our chamfer is towards the front. Uh, so we're gonna start with our oil rail here, our expander. So that 
gap right there is hard to see on the piston, so I'm going to show you. See that gap right there? That's going to go towards the top. So that's why I wrote on here so the writing doesn't throw you off. The way this piston sits, this is the top dot towards the front. Um, so that is right there. It's, hard, it's kind of hard to see. You can kind of see it. Uh, that's where that's going to go. And then our thin little uh, oil rings, the it's going to be kind of hard. This is the hardest part about doing the piston rings is because they all like to move together. So sometimes it's easier if you can hold one with your finger and then try to spin the other one. But the two other oil rails or oil rings, one, the top one is going to go here. That's the way I do it. You can do top or bottom, doesn't matter. And then the other oil ring is going to be 180 degrees basically apart. I put them just past the pin. Some guys line them right up with the pin. I put one on this side of the pin towards the front this on the other side. So you can see here, there's the bottom. And did we move? Nope. And there's the top, the top gap. So that's that covers that. So expander to the front, top of the piston, one uh, ring, oil ring here, one oil ring there. So our second ring, real simple, right to the bottom. So there's our, our gap for our, our um, Second ring that goes towards the bottom of the piston, as you can see, and simply our top ring goes right to the top. Again, this is the way I do it. There's some different opinions out there. There's some different, uh, you know, theories on, on why guys do it. This is the way I do it. I've had really good luck. Uh, some I've seen got some guys say they don't even clock their piston rings, and what you don't want to happen is your, all your gaps lining up. So gases can just escape right through those gaps just like that that's really what you don't want so you kind of place everything 180 degrees away from each other to prevent anything that from happening um you if you pull a more, an engine apart sometimes the the gaps do move around but you want to give it its best shot by placing those as far apart from each other so uh top ring to the top second ring to the bottom just like that